a lot of it gets boring. And Let people make that decision? I don't want to do that to the public. I think if they're interested, they will show up. I think it's more of a matter of principle with me rather than the $600. I know we can find the $600 if, if we feel very strongly about it. We do have the council contingency fund. I just, I don't think it's something that we need to, to broadcast. I would rather have the people show up and have us willing to have public input when they're there, when they're in attendance. I have not heard from the very few people I've mentioned this to support press broadcasting it. Other comments? If not, I'll take a motion on the side. You want a motion? I will move that we do not cable cast our budget workshops unless, if I can add that in there, Pertaining to the schools and some, I think it might have to be reworked from the schedule and some of the parts of the budget that would be of interest, and especially the schools. Is there a second to that motion? It's I'm not clear about the motion, right. uh, yeah. Madam Chairman. We're saying the school, town budget workshops you'd like to have cable cast and um, other particular items that you want to have covered? Well, I was going through the, the list here, and I think I could pick the, some of them out that I think is pretty dry when you get into high rent rentals, insurances, and some of the, uh, like, uh, the building inspector, the assessor, and what have you. I think that's pretty dry for people to sit there and not have anything in front of them, as Council McLaughlin said. So I think it'd have to be reworked. Yes, they would be interested in public safety, public works, recycling, original waste, and things like that. So if you can rework it, I would be in favor of maybe two of them. That would be <coughs> cable cast. The others, I would say no. So I would draw my I would draw my motion that confused everybody and somebody can make a new one. I'll make an all or nothing motion that we not <coughs> uh, cable cast uh, any of the uh, town council uh, municipal <coughs> budget workshops and if the school board uh, chooses differently uh, to cable cast any of theirs they certainly have that prerogative. I don't think we can decide for them on this uh, account, can we? No, I guess I I'm still going to, I'll make the motion and then ask, can we? Is there a second to that motion and we can discuss it? I'll second. Second. I, when I may, I think you were referring to the joint workshops, not necessarily the singular workshops of school board. Is that That's right? correct. The joint, we can decide. On the joint, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I made a motion that we not cable cast any of them. Uh, joint or singular as a, as a consequence personally uh, on the expense issue. And I believe I had a second. There was discussion. Councilman Amaral. Yeah, I just, I'd just like to make a comment because I think if we made a decision on which meetings were going to be broadcast because they're boring or they're not boring, probably not too many of our town council meetings would be broadcast. Because the same argument can be made. People don't have the papers at home. They don't have the ordinances. They have to sit here through all kinds of items that they may not be interested in. And I think it's pretty presumptuous of us to think that some people are going to think public works is interesting, but they're not going to think something else is interesting. How do we know what people out there are going to find interesting? I, I think we should let people make that decision. If they don't want to watch it, fine. They can turn it off. They do the same thing with our council meetings. They're not the most exciting game in town either. But uh, yeah, I think we're being pretty presumptuous in just saying nobody's going to be interested in the budget. It's, too, it's really boring. I think people are very interested in the budget this year. It's their tax money that we're talking about spending. And uh, I think we ought to, we ought to really uh, think carefully about this before we just slough it off. Councilman Leach. 
Uh, yes, Madam Chairman, I just wanted to uh, reiterate the point about the fact that they have rebroadcast. I was supposed to be at another meeting tonight, <coughs> and my option was to be here. I will watch that other meeting uh, through a tape tomorrow at my convenience. I think that uh, although the budget meetings come fast and furious beginning the last week in March and continue throughout the entire month of August, uh, excuse me, April, uh, there are other items that take people's attention during those months. And I think if we give them the opportunity, if not to see them live but in rebroadcast, then we are opening up the lines of communication. Also, when uh, items are rebroadcast, people sometimes tape them and fast forward and only tape the parts that are pertinent to what they're interested in. And I kn do know that there are a lot of people who borrow my tapes to watch both town council and school board meetings on certain aspects of that two and a half or three hour meeting. So there is a lot of information that is being shared uh, in the community on videotape. Thank you. I'm ready for the question. Well, I just want to make a comment. I, I really hate to have it exactly say no broadcasting at all. Um, it would be nice to be able to be a little flexible. But I'll move the question. All those in favor of broadcasting no budget workshops at all. Is that correct? That was the... All those opposed. So I, Madam, I, I was going to ask, does that mean that it passes that we will if we deny that motion or we have to re-motion? We, re we should have a positive vote on a definite item. So, is there another motion? There is not. There is, Councilor Reed. Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, I make a motion that we broadcast all budget workshops, uh, town, council, and school and joint. I'm not sure we can really. Can we dictate mm -hmm. that all yep. school board ones be broadcast yep. as well? If, if any folks wanted to tape the meetings anyway for placement on the cable station, under the current rules adopted by the council, they could do that under public access. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what you're really deciding uh, is whether or not you want to specifically encourage the activity by agreeing to compensate the people who will be doing the filming using municipal dollars, just as has been done for planning board meetings, council meetings, and school okay. board meetings. So basically, that's our item, and it, there be, is public access anyway. Yes, there's public access anyway. The school department does does not fund any of the, the broadcasting of sc even school meetings. Uh, all of those funds are from the municipal budget for all cable cast. Is there a second to Councilor Reed's motion? I would second it with an amendment that uh, that we broadcast all of the workshops uh, if we are able to secure people to run the cam, operate the cams. Any amendable to an amendment? I am. <laughs> sure, whatever. Yeah. Can I ask for clarification? I haven't really received yet about this $600, <clears throat> where it's going to come from. It would come from the existing cable account, and, and looking at, uh, you know, the, the council hasn't had too many special meetings yet that you've cable cast, and you know, overall we're in pretty good shape, so it, it looks as though we're going to be under budget as far as uh, the amount that's been allocated for broadcasting meetings. So are you saying that in your best estimate this would not be an additional expense? Well, it would be an additional expense, but it would, Within be, their budget. would be budget savings that, that we might realize that we wouldn't realize as a result of this decision. But are there not some possible other workshops, town council workshops, we're planning and broadcasting like perhaps the one on affordable housing? That has been mentioned. But well, as of this point, we're in pretty good shape. Okay. I'll move the question. All those in favor of broadcasting all workshop, budget workshops, school, town, and joint as long as adequate staff and funding can be found. Is that how you worded that, Jane? Within the existing budget. <laughs> I wasn't there. I might as well. <laughs> Opposed, Billy. Okay, 6-1. <laughs> 
to consider proposed item number 115 to consider proposed amendments to the purchasing procedure regarding the procurement of professional services and take any necessary action. Michael? Yes, after all the, the school activities uh, at the beginning of the school year, there was quite a bit of concern on the part of the council as to what exactly the purchasing procedures were for the municipal side of government. And we, we, we have had uh, for uh, probably eight or nine years a formal purchasing procedure. Uh, in looking at it, uh, what, I, what I found in, in relation to this particular issue is that, is that it might be helpful to spell out a few more issues. And I'm suggesting several amendments. One is that uh, there's a provision here that we can participate in joint bids uh, with the Greater Portland Council of Government. I'm also proposing that we have that we be given the option to participate with other communities and entities in joint bids, not only the Council of Governments. And, and that's uh, in case there's a bid that the Council of Governments is not doing. That, that does give us the ability to to to, uh, to do a joint bid with, with another entity. Uh, not not. Uh, you would not then be in uh, competition mm -hmm. with bids that are already being done by... No, by there's, there's no intention to be in competition with God. Uh, secondly, there was a requirement before that any issue that was referendable, if, if that is such a word, uh, would, would actually be voted on by the town council so that it would notify everyone that this expense was approved and then it could be subject to a referendum. The charter did have 100000 and that's what this procedure had. It's proposed to change that to what the charter now reads, which is 0.05% of the last state valuation in a, a complying with the recent charter change adopted by the citizens. On construction contracts, uh, these are totally new sections, and it provides that any contract for the construction, major alteration, or repair of any municipal building, this relates to buildings in particular, involving a total cost in excess of $25,000, except contracts for professional architectural and engineering services. And this is intended to mean landscape architectural as well in this particular section. Uh, shall be awarded by competitive bids. Uh, this is for the actual construction. Plans and specifications shall be prepared for all contracts over 25,000. The review criteria is, is as in the, the review criteria for all other bids. And it, this does provide that we could utilize a list of pre-qualified bidders. The concern is there is when you don't pre-qualify bidders, a lot of times you then get low bids and they're extremely difficult to discard once uh, you know it's a contractor that you don't want to work with. This past year we had two contractors that ended up going bankrupt on us. And, uh, we ended up spending a lot more on engineering services than we otherwise would have done. For the procurement of professional services, it's uh, the provision is that if the cost is going to be over 15000 for the design of buildings, site plans, or other engineering process, uh, the town manager in his capacity as the purchasing agent would select uh, a prime professional who may be an architect or an engineer. And uh, Councilor McLaughlin pointed out to me this afternoon that this also should read uh, landscape architect as well. Uh, anyway, the professional retained for a project should perform only those services for which he or she is competent and shall utilize the services of other qualified professionals as required to provide a proper and complete professional service to the town. This is to ensure that architects aren't doing engineering work and, and vice versa. Uh, in the selection of professionals, we would have to get three proposals. Uh, we could publish it in the newspaper, but it's not an absolute requirement. Uh, and the re review criteria uh, would be uh, as outlined in uh, a, another section of this policy. The, the, the review criteria is, is essentially, uh, it, it's 11 different things. You look at the ability, the capacity, you look at the, whether or not they can get the contract done on time, reputation, integrity, uh, how they did on previous contracts, uh, whether or not the, the, the bidding documents complied with the law, uh, whether or not that they look like they could get the job done, uh, whether or not you felt the contract was going to be around to provide future maintenance. Uh, so that they don't disappear halfway through the contract, whether or not they placed conditions, uh, the life cycle cost, if, if that becomes a factor, and uh, re reserving the right to uh, reject or accept any or all bids. That, that's essentially the proposal. And, and uh, up to this point, for, for construction projects, we have, we've always obtained bids. This is really no change. It just puts into writing uh, what we have been doing. For all professional services, we've always obtained qualifications uh, from 
professionals and we would continue to do that the only exception is, is we've, we've been dealing for the most part exclusively with one engineering firm since about 1971 and under under this particular proposal uh, we, we would be uh, going through a review process uh, for engineering services uh, wh whereby you know for the, I think the routine services would probably be looking at bringing on a firm for two to three years uh, to do the the planning board site plan reviews and those those types of reviews as well as the routine Bob Malley or I have a question to call an engineer we don't want to every time we want an engineer to you know come out and look at something for an hour to have to get a, a bid uh, plus it, it helps to have some continuity and beyond that for all projects uh, you know, for example, the, out here we've been looking at doing a site plan for the back of this building. You know, we would procure, uh, 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 procure some uh, proposals uh, to do that work. So what it does, I think it gives the public the confidence that, uh, that we're not only getting the best price, but we're also getting the best proposal. You know, and I think that's a, you know, it, it, the, the investment discussion we're having earlier. You know, it, we don't always go for the, the low bid or the best bid. Uh, we go, you know, for the bid that meets all the different criteria and qualifications. So, uh, you know, it would be a change with the engineering services, and I think one that uh, is uh, certainly in keeping with uh, what municipal governments ought to do. I have a question. Um, is this applied to all sides of town expenditure? What, what I would do uh, if this was adopted by the council is to uh, send a memorandum to the superintendent of schools informing her that it has been adopted by the town council and that they might uh, uh, consider using it as, as a guide uh, for their, as their own purchasing policy and suggest that she might want to bring it uh, before the school board in, in either this form or uh, slightly revised uh, as she sees fit. Councilor Jordan. Yes, <coughs> just one comment, and I think it might be more for the viewers out there. I remember years ago when the charter was put together that the $100,000 deal was in there so the people would have something to say other than the budget if any project was in the town over $100,000. 0.05% of the state valuation now would represent how many dollars. I was just throwing this out for the people out there, roughly. Well, I, I'm hoping it's going to go down next year. Uh, <laughs> Not, not hoping too greatly, but it's around 300000 Around 300000 So it's gone from 100000 to around 300000 And if the state valuation goes down next year, therefore this would drop down. Yeah. Okay. But, but that 100000 to 300000 that sounds like a large increase. But that 100000 hadn't been changed from 1967 until now, which a difference of 23 years. And I think, interestingly enough, the CPI ran, used to run from, I think, 1967. And that had gone up from a dollar to 365 before they went to a new CPI index, so certainly it's it's not even keeping with uh, the cost of living during that period. No, I understand that. It's not out of line with when this budget was put together and at the size of the budget that we had at this time, but I was just trying to throw this out so the viewers could get an idea of the change. But what they also should keep in mind is that the town charter now says the 0.05%, 0.5%, 0 .05%, and that this is just, re you know, being more consistent with the town charter by having it stated here. Other comments on this, Councillor Amaro? Yeah. On, on, the, on page 5, the added language for the Greater Portland Council of Government. If the intent is not to be in conflict with bids that are being uh, operated by COG, I think we ought to put that in, in this language because somebody a few years from now is not going to realize that. Mm -hmm. I don't think we want to start encouraging the town to uh, be entering into joint bids if there's already a bidding process available for the So I think we can just add some language there that permits the town to do that, uh, uh, to, to participate with other communities and entitles and entities in joint bids uh, when COG is not a participant, something to that effect. I, we have had one instance where COG has not followed their specifications. It's been in the case of road salt. And, uh, that was two years ago. You know, in, well, it still remains today. They, have, they had had certain uh, standards in their bids, which for whatever reason they chose not to follow. 
Uh, we went off on our own and got our own bids. It had to do whether the salt pile was covered or uncovered. Uh, you know, in, in those instances, you know, I, I, do, I don't want to be in competition with COG and don't want to create that. But in that instance of SALT, I think it was then in our best interest, if we, we weren't pleased with what COG was doing, to be able to check with, in that case it was Portland and South Portland, were both not with COG. And if we could get in with a bid on them, we could save the taxpayers' dollars. And, and I, I, that carte blanche language you, you suggested, I, I think, uh, I'm not exactly comfortable with because I, I think it would hurt us from possibly saving some funds. Well, you know, it's just the message. idea, though, that if, if you're going to, you might save on one bid, but if you if you undermine the whole process in the long run, you lose because we won't have a joint bidding uh, process to talk if every community starts doing that. So, yeah. I think it's a real concern. I don't think we should end run the council of government's joint bidding process. Councilor Jordan. You want to discuss it because I'm talking? Uh, I agree with what the manager says, and I understand also understand what Councilor Amron was saying. And there is that possibility, and it has happened, and it's happened in a couple of other local communities as far as bidding on vehicles because, because COG wasn't into it, and they didn't want to go into it with the type of specs that the community wanted. So they went it together, the two communities. So I think the door should be left open there for that possibility. They weren't there to undermine COG. It's just that COG was going to do it one way and they weren't pleased with it, so they went on their own. Yeah, we always have that. I mean, we have that now, the language the way it is. Right. That we can go on our own. It's just the entering with other communities that <coughs> can become a real problem. There seems to be some contradictory language here in this whole. The town shall participate in COG joint services program whenever it is deemed in the best interest of the town to do so. And the, the determination to participate shall be jointly made by the department head and the manager. Okay, so we can participate in COG if the manager and say the public works director say, okay, this is the best way to go. Then we're saying the town may all, it's proposed that we say the town may also participate with other communities. <coughs> Maybe it's just in the wrong place in this whole document or something. I don't know. I, th I think what it's I'm trying to, to say is we can do two types of joint bids, one with COG and one without. Mm -hmm. But uh, by adding that, that last lang, last lang, it's getting late, the last line <laughs> gives us the <laughs> flexibility to, to utilize joint bids with an entity other than COG. For instance, the library books that we buy, we buy through the Southern Maine Library Association. And there is a joint bid there that, that gets 40% off, of, or whatever the exact percentage is, off the list price of all books. COG has never done a joint bid for library books. We do utilize the joint bid with another entity. You know, someone could look at this policy and say, you don't have the right to do that. And mm -hmm. that's why I, I proposed this sentence originally the way it was before any language to, to make it clear that, that that type of thing is allowed. And, you know, that was saving, you know, books now, or if, you want, if we want to buy a copy of the Civil War, which is $50, you know, we can pick it up for uh, $30. I'm thinking maybe Section 6 here should not be entitled Greater Portland Council of Governments, but rather joint bids, bids and come up with, you know, let's, if we can agree on that as a start, then I don't know how we're going to fix all the language <laughs> problems here. But I find that confusing that we're talking about COG and other communities in the same section. Be better. First off, um, if we don't have... Well, perhaps we could have Michael bring back the section bring back. we worded for our next meeting and we can adopt the rest of it. I'm not sure what the council wants me to bring I'm, back. I'm not either. And I, you know, I'd be I happy to bring want. back anything that, if I, you know, with cleaner language, if I get a sense of what the mm. policy direction is of the council. I'm not sure what I'd go right. Why well, I'd we like to see us set a priority that we plan to participate in the joint bidding of COG when it's available. When it's not, we, we want to save as much <coughs> money as we can by participating in any other way in joint bids. Uh, I just don't think we can have our cake and eat it too and say we're always going to go out on every bid and if we don't like 
one bid that COG is doing, then we're going to go out with some other communities. Pretty, pretty soon, the whole system break, that system breaks down. I but think we have to look over the year whether we're saving money through the through that joint bidding process. Look elsewhere for the what's not being offered through COG. That's great. But if COG is not in its bidding process um, using the standards that we feel are important, mm -hmm. then we, we have should. to either work through, you know, to get that straightened out. But we shouldn't be locked into that particular bid. We should have the flexibility to, like the salt instance. I think when you when you look at the history of, of our relationship with COG and, and joint purchasing, we have probably been the most loyal community, if that's the right term, to the COG process. Uh, you know, we've participated in 90% of their bids. I, the only exception of the, that we're not participating in is the road salt bid, and that was simply because they didn't follow their own specifications. W what I was trying to do here in this language was to codify exactly what we're now doing and you know I think if, if you tie the hands too much you're, you're, you're telling the town manager as the purchasing agent uh, I think you're tying his or her hands whoever's in that position any time of just a little too much I think you gotta I would hope you'd have the faith in the town manager you know that uh, you know he that he or she would recognize that you know in the long run you've got to work together and you've, you've got to support that which has helped you the most and with the hope it would continue to help you in the future I just, you know, I, I'm not, I, I get the message and I've had it for a long time and I agree, COG is, is not 90% of the time usually the best route, but uh, I, I'd like to have the flexibility when I really think it's in the best interest of, of the taxpayers to, to go another route. Councilor Jordan. Would it be too late to adopt this at our next council meeting? You can adopt it whenever you want. There's no great... Do you feel you can help the language out in another month? I don't think we've given him direction. I don't think the council. No, no, he I don't doesn't really know what we want him to say. I, I, I think he knows what we pretty much what we're all here. I think the most of us here to want to support COG as much as possible. But I don't think we should close the door. So we have to support them. We should be able to go out with other communities if it's a betterment for the. Town of Cape Elizabeth. Comments from anybody else? Madam Chair. Yes. I appreciate the need and the desire for the flexible language because I think it gives us more of a, a stick with COG. If I'm just for my own education, what? How do we deal with COG when we're not happy? What kind of input do we have with COG in their joint? Um, services type of bid. How did we let them know that we weren't satisfied with their road salt situation? In that particular instance, I think Bob Malley, the Director of Public Works, attended four or five different meetings, uh, letting them know the concern. And right up front, we told them that unless they followed the specifications, we weren't going to accept the bid. The, the particular instance here was that they had a requirement in their bid that the, that the salt had to be covered. When you don't have it covered, and we pay by the per ton, when you don't have it covered, what happens is all the rain and the snow gets in it, the, the, the salt not only crystallizes, but also gets much heavier. So you're getting poorer salt and heavier salt, uh, therefore sp spending more money. COG chose not to, for whatever reason, to enforce the requirement uh, that, uh, that it be covered because some towns thought they were getting a much better deal. The majority of towns were still willing to go with God. Bob Malley felt strongly, and I agreed with him, that that was not a good deal for us. And, you know, and ultimately, they went with this other contractor who we didn't have as much faith with, and those communities ran out of salt. And the town of Yarmouth was over here getting salt from our salt shed, uh, and, you know, which, which they then reimbursed us for. So, you know, they're, they're, I think that's a, a graphic example of... Uh, of what we do. But, you know, Bob and I think all the department heads are extremely active. Dave Pickering has let uh, John Booby know of, of some concerns and has been extremely impressed with, with John's uh, response uh, he, uh, in, in trying to help with some of the issues with the police crews a bit last year. The, the cruises came in six months late, and a lot of that was, some, you know, because of the, some of the transition in COG, because they missed an early deadline, and then things just kept building. But uh, now the department heads have never been hesitant, nor have I to. Uh, give COG a call and encourage them along and into a system as well. Well, if you added the phrase when COG is not a participant, 
or does not uh, uphold our specifications at the end of your work. Would, would that, would that, would that satisfy? I'd be satisfied with that. You'd be satisfied. Would everyone be satisfied with that? And yes. Just move, mm -hmm. move this tonight. With the um, changing of the title of Section 6 to Joint Bids or Joint Bidding Process. I guess we better call it Joint Bidding Process. And then your, your change under Section 9 be inserting landscape architect when you're talking about professional services. Okay, Councilor McCoff. I have another question for the manager. He finishes with my landscape architects. No, I'm still writing in landscape architect. What am I looking for? There you found it. Nothing else yet. No, it's too bad Tom Emery left before you did that. <laughs> I inserted landscape architectural in A and landscape architect in B. Okay. Okay. In A, Mike, you put an emphasis on the fact that this was a municipal building that we were talking yeah. about. I'm wondering the reasoning for that, because I was thinking particularly of the tennis court, the municipal facility, we might want to have this kind of language applied to, not just a building. That's certainly the intent. Can we say facility instead of building? Thank you. You're now seeing the ordinance committee at work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote this late on a Friday when I was really trying to get a council agenda out. We appreciate the fact that we got it when we did. <laughs> Some of us would not have been ready tonight. You, you want when you, hit, you want to hear the two items that I wanted to have the council take out of order. Um, so well, far, I appreciate so good. you coming forth with this because this has been a concern of Are there any other comments? If not, I'll take a motion on this item. I would move adoption of the uh, so discussed uh, purchasing procedure <laughs> with all of the uh, corrections. Second. I got a motion. Further comments? All in favor? Seven zero. Congratulations, we didn't put another thing off for another month. Okay, item one sixteen um, to consider the renewal lease for the Kennebuck Girl Scout Council and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern. Yeah, the Girl Scouts uh, rent the larger of the two buildings that offices row at Fort Williams. They were under a five-year lease uh, that that it will expire on December thirty-first of, of nineteen ninety. Uh, they are in the process of attempting to get a building underway over at the Cummings Road Business Park uh, over, over in South Portland, over in the new Press Herald, uh, the Portland Newspaper's print, printing uh, shop. Uh, originally, they hoped to have it ready by January 1st, but as of a week or so ago, when I last spoke to Ingrid Echtel, the director, they hadn't broken ground yet. So we discussed, you know, perhaps letting them continue uh, for a while. They ex still hope the building will be done uh, early. Uh, in late spring, early summer of this coming year. So I've discussed with them it, uh, extend a new lease for a period of eight months, uh, which, is, which is about a 10% increase over the current rental amount that they're now paying. Uh, what it would do is enable us to keep a tenant there through the rest of this winter and the summer. I would encourage uh, the council to uh, look kindly on this lease. Comments on this item? Motion. Madam Chairman, I move that we approve the lease as presented to us this evening. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All in favor of the motion 7 0. <laughs> Item number one. <laughs> Item uh, number 117. <laughs> To consider formalizing the Pledge of Allegiance and take any necessary action. The prime sponsor. <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I will take, I would like to take an, an item out of order, if you would please. Um, item number 118, which is uh, to consider the request from New England Telephone for one pole location on Cottage Farms Road and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern. 
Yes, this this was an addendum that, that was sent out during my absence last week by the town clerk, and uh, this is uh, on Cottage Farms Road uh, to serve uh, one of those new homes that uh, is under construction. Yeah, and Chairman, I move we take this item out of order. Second. All in favor? Discussion, item 118. Income. Madam Chairman, I move approval. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? 7-0. Take <laughs> item, another item out of order, item 119. Is there a motion to do this? So moved. Second. All in favor? Item 119 is to consider the appointment of building inspectors, plumbing inspectors, electrical inspectors, deputy health officers, code enforcement officers, town assessor, and tree warden for the 1991 and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern. Yeah. In uh, this case, uh, this is something that's routinely done in December and uh, did, not, uh, did not appear on the regular agenda. Uh, what I'd like to recommend is that you appoint uh, Gerald Daigle and Ernest McVean as the building inspector, plumbing inspector, electrical inspector, deputy health officer, and code enforcement officers. Uh, Gerald E. Daigle as the town assessor, and uh, uh, Rick Churchill as the tree warden. Under most of the other appointments don't need to be done uh, each year, but under state statute, it, it, there is a specific provision which provides that these particular offices shall be appointed in. Madam Chairman, I move that we appoint um, the building inspector, plumbing inspector, electrical inspector, deputy health officers, code enforcement officer, town assessor, and tree warden as previously named by the manager for 1991. Second. Discussion? All in favor? 7-0. <laughs> and now we'll continue with our uh, basic agenda. Item number 118. To oh, excuse me, 117, the Pledge of Allegiance, um, to consider having the Pledge of Allegiance as a fixed part of our, our procedure in each of our meetings. Councilor Jordan, this is one of your proposals. Would you like to make a presentation? Well, personally, I think it's kind of late because we already done it to this council meeting, and it was something that I had. Uh, I think I proposed was my idea that we have it on the agenda this month and start the new year off in 1991 is doing it. So I will say that I'm glad that we, everyone has agreed to it and I think it's a great thing to start the <laughs> council meetings off with. And uh, I so move that it is part of the council agenda for the future. Second. Do we uh, amend the town council rules to do this, or do we just do it? I looked through the council rules and discovered that the rules don't actually spell out the order of the agenda. It, what, it, what it states is that the, the agenda is set by the manager. That's why I put it on the agenda this month, because I got a pretty good indication from the council that, that last month that's what you wanted to see. But I, but I did, but Bill had also asked, Council Jordan had asked that the Council formally decide it, and that's why it's on the agenda as well for you to give me direction on whether or not you wish it to appear in the future. Thank you. I think with the, the world situation, it was appropriate to start a month early, Billy. I'll move the question. All those in favor of um, having the Pledge of Allegiance part of our regular meeting? The 7 0. Now we'll go back to item, an addendum item 120. Um, I'll have to ask Michael to um, give the background. Yeah. It's a memorandum from the Comprehensive State Management Growth yeah. Legislation. This would be an, an item to uh, authorize the chief elected official, who is the council chairman, to sign uh, necessary papers in order for the town to receive a comprehensive planning grant. Madam Chairman, I move that we take item 120 out of order. Second. Thank you. All in favor? 7 0. Yes. Okay, the specific reason why this is before you at this late moment is that we, we had received back uh, 
I believe in October notification from the state that they were going to give us this grant. They also had all sorts of requirements in terms of uh, having to develop a work plan and all of it related to a town that hadn't really started its comprehensive planning process. Obviously, Cape just recently adopted a plan. Uh, Maureen O'Mara, the town planner, and I have had a couple of different meetings uh, in conversations both with Kay Rand, who is the head of uh, comprehensive planning for the state, as well as with our uh, chief contact for Cape Elizabeth in that particular agency. Uh, the gentleman who, who has that position contacted Maureen O'Mara today and suggested that, uh, you know, even though we were still formalizing exactly what we would spend the, the funds on, that uh, we ought to uh, ensure that the funds are encumbered. Uh, she didn't specifically ask why, but I, I, it was fairly clear, uh, you know, from the tone uh, that, the, that the reason this is, is being done is uh, before the legislature gets moving too far along uh, <coughs> facing the current budget situation. Specifically, the state has offered us a grant of uh, up to $30,943. The match is 10314 uh, It can include all the expenses that we've already uh, made uh, for the comprehensive plan. So therefore, uh, we don't have to come up with a match at this point. It's, it's simply uh, it agreeing to accept the 30943 from the state of Maine. And uh, we're, we're continuing to work, uh, Maureen particularly is continuing to work uh, with the state to, uh, to figure out exactly how these funds might be utilized. It, they're not technically supposed to be used for implementation in quotation marks, uh, but we have identified a number of areas uh, which uh, would help to proceed along the comprehensive plan that uh, the state would not consider to be implementation. Could you give more information about this? Yes, uh, for example, additional work on the town center, additional work on affordable housing, uh, some, some a, a few minor amendments that they're recommending be, be made to the plan. Uh, some of uh, some similar things like that that are uh, contained in the plan. The more work on a capital improvement plan. Uh, there was a specific recommendation in there that uh, that, that another study be done. It escapes me at this point, and uh, it would be that that study uh, could be funded. I have a question in the proposed language of the resolution in the third paragraph and the now therefore be it resolved in the third line is transfer from existing accounts ten thousand dollars does that have to be in there for some bureaucratic reason or can we strike it or is it covered in the append the last appendix or whatever here supplement to rider B it, I'd it, like to eliminate it if we don't need yeah. it but it's I, I hesitate to deviate from language the state has given us it's to give them an opportunity yeah. to uh, uh, right so it's yes. a bureaucratic situation I understand yeah. that but, but they clearly understand, and uh, as it spells out, we can use uh, any funds we've spent, we have spent since August 4th, 1988. And uh, the state, Kay Rand in particular, in particular, who was the head of this agency, uh, clearly understands and knows that's what we're doing. And uh, she's, uh, th and by the way, they're absolutely thrilled with the plan. They think it's one of the best ones they've seen. And although they, they have suggested a few minor amendments, uh, they, they, they can't wait to get their hands on it and review it and to adopt it. Uh, so that they can use it as a shining example for other communities. And I think that's a real credit to the Comprehensive Planning Commission <coughs> and to Steve Butler as well. Yes, and the council is. and everyone else involved. Great. Other comments from counselors? No, I, I would like to say that uh, I think it's great. We better grab it before they change the mind. Is that a motion? So <laughs> more. So more. Second. 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 <laughs> for the discussion? All in favor of accepting the grant from the state for comprehensive plan? 7 0. Uh, the last item on the agenda would be um, citizens' discussion of items that have not been on the agenda. Is there anyone who wishes to speak? Well, if Mr. not. Mr. Capano left. I answered his question and I went to the <laughs> I thought he was going to stay and make a comment. 
If not, I want to wish all my fellow counselors, the town manager, and Mrs. Pizzo, and all the citizens of Cape Elizabeth a very happy holiday. Thank you. 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 Thank